Welcome to ECN Trade Daily Video. Before we begin, it should be noted that any advice is of a general nature only and that your personal circumstances have not been taken into consideration. Hello everyone, my name is Rob Clayton and thank you for joining me. After Friday's US job data, the Australian dollar's mood has reverted back to a bullish tone. Having posted three inverted hammers, the market is now on its way to take the challenge towards the level of 66, 65, 75. A key level which was recently seen as a breakdown from the Australian dollar to the lower side of the range that was called around 65 cents. It was a mixed week for the Australian dollar after the Reserve Bank of Australia raised interest rates for the 10th consecutive meeting with rates now sitting at 3.6% while high interest rate talks from the US Federal Reserve's two-day semi-annual testimony briefly ignited the US dollar close to its objective of 106 before reverting and now looking back towards the lower side of 104. The risks emanating from Silicon Valley Bank or the SVB and also Signature Bank also rattled the markets. However, the US Treasury Department, the Federal Reserve and the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation took joint action to restore faith in the banking system that emanated from the SVB and Signature Bank. However, looking to the job data, 311,000 jobs were added, according to the Labor Department's report, easily beating the 224,000 forecast. However, the unemployment rate rose to 3.6%, moving away from the 1969 lows of 3.4%. So looking at the technicals, there's all eyes now on the move to 66, 65, 75. A little bit of caution here because the MACD still remains heavy and I feel that we could see a strong rejection from this area and revert back towards the bottom side of the range of 65 cents. Looking at the euro, well all eyes will be on the ECB this week when there's much talk of a 50 base point rate hike. This would see rates rise to 3.5%. Along with that, the dollar index, well can it stage a rebound off the lows that may be around 103 to 103 and a half. If so, this would see a cap that's coming into play here around 107, 05, 15, and could see a rejection from there and look back towards the bottom side of the range around 105. Interesting play for the dollar yen as the market for over the last three days has been heavy and now looks towards the bottom side of this range here, somewhere around 133 and a half to about 132, 20, 40 as a broader call. But I feel that we may not reach that area and we could see a snap back to the upside. So I'm not abandoning the call at 138 to 142 as of yet. Sterling, well, the market accelerated on Friday and especially from the last three days, from the fall that we saw it triggered by Jerome Powell's testimony. Nevertheless, as we approach the top side, I feel that we are looking towards a cap around 121.15 to 121.60.70 and reassess from there. Following on to gold, what well, the market gapped open on Monday and now looks towards a topside resistance around 1,890 to 96. Bringing this down a little bit here, I feel that there is still much work for a call to the upside above 1,900 to sustain and therefore could easily see this gap closely filled, but not quite. And a trigger of 1,868 would reinstate the downside to 1,832 to 33. I'm not going to get too bullish at the top of this range here. And I feel there is an ambush waiting from the bears. Finishing up with oil, well, the market did rebound somewhat off 75 and a half, but not enough to give me any call to the upside as of yet. With 78 capping, I feel there is further risk to the downside, maybe even down towards that $72 call that I had earlier in the week. Well, that's a wrap for the day. Thank you very much for joining me. And as always, look out for the interest report. I hope you enjoy the great start to the new week.